Welcome back, folks. Uh, this is the salt water flush. One thing I failed to mention in the binder cocktail video is that this is not um, necessarily, these supplements aren't necessarily just gonna make you feel amazing right away. There tends to be an acclimation period, particularly for the binders, where one to two weeks, um, when all of that stuff that's been sitting there for so many years gets scraped off and stirred up, uh, you tend to have some serious detox reactions. So remember, um, this process is not just about feeling amazing right off the bat. It's about taking two steps backward to take 100 steps forward. And that's the case with many of these detox, um, many of these supplements and many of these uh, parts of the protocol. So keep that in mind, right? You can't take a few things and say, oh, I feel like shit, this thing, this, this protocol sucks. It doesn't work like that. So saltwater flush is another uh, amazing essential part of consistently keeping a clean small and large intestine um, so the saltwater flush is very simple uh, basically you want to take the highest quality sea salt you can find in my opinion the best salts are Eden sea salt Celtic sea salt if, if you know for budget reasons this is a cheap good sea salt salt work Icelandic flake salt um, some other good salts are like uh, from Longevity Warehouse, the Icelandic sea salt. Also, there's Nordor and Havsno, H-A-V-S-N-O. That's from Norway. It's a very, very awesome salt. You can use pink Himalayan salt, but to be quite honest with you, a lot of pink Himalayan salts are toxic. They're not actually from the Himalayan mountains. And um, furthermore, sea salts... Uh, the sea in general is a healing wonderland. The plasma in our blood basically represents seawater. And that's why I like getting as many nutrients as I can from the sea, and salt in particular. Um, so the purpose of, of salt flushing is for cleansing the intestinal tract, balancing the electrolytes, uh, but also it is incredibly effective at remineralizing the body. Salt has everything the human body needs. A little lower levels of potassium than we would like, but um, you can balance that out with a potassium supplement or a greens juice. So salt water flush, what I'm about to show you, I have done it, I did it about five times a week for six, for four months before I started noticing any issues with flora. It has been known to reduce levels of flora um, of good bacteria in your intestines. So I would say this should be a two week, a two time a week thing. While of course, as long as you're taking your probiotics, which we'll talk about. Um, and if you'd like to do more, you can do more, but make sure you're listening to your body. You're understanding what your body needs. Okay. So it's, it's, it, it should invigorate you. You should do a salt flush in the morning. Actually, you can take your binders 20 to 30 minutes later, you do your salt flush and then take a freezing cold shower. That is just such a perfect recipe to get out of a funk or to start feeling better and start a great day. Um, so uh, that being said, if you're going to be doing a salt flush, there's no reason to do a, a, a laxative tea the night before. It's a waste. And to fix the potassium issues with salt, with consistent salt flushing, you can just take a greens powder regularly or green juices regularly or a potassium supplement from like um, Trace Minerals Research. Okay, salt water flush, very, very simple. We have 32 ounces of clean filtered Big Berkey water, which we'll talk about Big Berkey in a minute in the next video. And then we have about uh, you know, 16 ounces of, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. My ounces is way off. This is, huh? Well, I always thought this was 32 ounces. I am very wrong. I think this is 20 ounces, but this gets the job done. Um, so 20, I would say at least 25 ounces of water. Okay. Filtered water. And then we'd have, you know, 14 ounces of, of water in another jar. Okay, you can also use big glass water bottles, however you want to do it. The, the dosages and the amounts of water are not critical for getting this right. It's going to change with what you desire. 
So overall, what we're looking for is two tablespoons, uh, of about two tablespoons of salt, anywhere between one and three tablespoons of salt. Okay, starting with one and then working your way up to two, two and a half. Okay, so what we're gonna do, yeah, we'll, we'll just use the Celtic and the uh, Eden French Celtic. Okay, so this is a coffee scooper. I don't even have a tablespoon, honestly, because there's very few things that require exact dosaging in this protocol. I think this, this is like one and a half tablespoons. Um, so remember, if you want to do this precisely, just get a tablespoon and I would do one heaping tablespoon of this salt, one heaping table of this salt. For these purposes, I'm just going to do three quarters of this coffee scooper in here. Another three quarters. Now this is about how much salt I use when I do a salt flush. I do a salt flush about once, twice a week now, really once a week. So that was three quarters of a coffee scooper, three quarters of a coffee scooper. That's the dosage that works for me. For someone else, maybe a heaping table, one heaping tablespoon, it may be three heaping tablespoons. Okay, then we're gonna put some apple cider vinegar, about a tablespoon, lemon juice. Now this is just store-bought organic lemon juice. It's best to just juice your own lemons, but as you'll see moving forward, there's so many things to do. You have to pick your pick your battles wisely. And this is a battle that I just don't feel uh, that the trade-off of time of spending and juicing the lemon make you go crazy when putting into context all the other things that you have to do. So we got, you know, one ounce of lemon juice. And then we're gonna take warm water. I just moved into my new place. This is all I got for heating water right now. Sorry, folks. Uh, and you know, I like actually the, with these mason jars, I like using about this much salt brine concoction right here. So I use a little less cold water and a little, you know, and about that much hot water for purposes of this video. You want it to be warm. Okay. So that's the salt water concoction that we got there. Shake that bad boy up. Now what you would do is you would go ahead, you'd start your day, you put on your music, you would open your shades, thank the universe for the day, and then you do a salt flush. You take a couple sips of this. It's, it's gonna taste very, very difficult for some people. It's very unusual to have that much salt concentrated. And then you take a few sips of this to wash it down. And what I would do is basically just take a few sips of one and a few sips of the other and over the course of it should take you about 20 to 30 minutes to finish the whole thing and by the time you get you don't want to drink it too fast or you could throw up um and you know by the time you get to this this point you already your body's gonna potentially already be going to the bathroom so because of its density and because of its salt it, it's going to act as a flush and a laxative and you're basically gonna to go to the bathroom between five and 10 times in the next couple hours. And the first few are gonna be dense. And then as you go, as it continues, you, the, the bowel movements are basically just brown liquid, all this stuff coming out of your, you know, your small intestine. And for your first few, holy shit, you do not wanna do this in someone else's house. It, you know, it will just totally fuck up your relationship with that person. I mean, the, the smells of, it could potentially be traumatizing. Uh, it is traumatizing for the first few. The two most traumatizing smells I've ever experienced in my life are garlic oil, which we're gonna talk about, and the beginnings uh, of a human being first introduced to salt water flush. So yeah, you don't wanna have your girlfriend around, you don't want to uh, be doing this before a job interview. You wanna be home, settled, and you wanna make sure you have the windows open in your bathroom, because holy shit, you, when you smell it, you'll understand what kind of what I'm talking about when I say backed up toxins in your intestines, okay? So, slowly drink this after a few sips, chase it down with this. Eventually, you'd like to get both mason jars empty and do not eat for at least an hour afterwards. Um, so, uh, that should be it for the salt flush. Uh, 
So um, the other way of the fourth way of consistently clearing the bowel movement is with suppositories. Parasite suppositories are good for it. Uh, the best are like sulfur, like N-acetylcysteine or vitamin B1 is very good at that. Uh, suppositories with those things for, for creating that, the, the peristalsis. Also, you know, green coffee extract, um, those sort of things are good in suppositories, but not to be used uh, in the beginning of this process for someone who's very ill. So between the four of those things, you should be able to keep a consistent bowel blush. Um, give me a second here. I want to make sure I covered everything with salt flush. So drink it slowly and um, that is all. Salt water flush.